Yo, dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days, coming to you from the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California. We're doing it again with three easy steps to rain edition. We're going to be working with Secret Weapon Miniature and those tablescapes. We're going to be working with Army Painter and even Pro Acrylic. That's that monument creature caster style. So you can take a look at this battlescape, this tablescape, uh, Battle Terrain. It's fresh. I haven't done one of these workups for you guys yet, but step one, rattle can technique. We're gonna be doing a pre-highlight or a pre-shade. You guys seen us do this before with this with the airbrush, but today we're keeping it OG ghetto. We're gonna be using the Army Painter, one of my favorite brands of spray paints on the market. We're gonna lay it down hard and black, but we're gonna have to bring some grayscale in. So we're gonna use an incredibly reasonably priced can of spray paint from GW. But if you don't have that available to you or you're not made of money, you could just go to Home Depot and get a can of white spray paint for 99 cents. As is with anything, when I'm doing a pre-shade or a pre-highlight, I'm going to just bring in the highlight. Just top down, find the raised areas, create some shine, some delineation. But ultimately, this is terrain, so don't overthink it. I have a whole set of these to do. This is going to be a display board for my army, but I have like eight tiles. So I'm going to do a whole table. So real quick, lock it in. Don't be afraid to go back and forth between your white and your black spray paint. It's not hard. I'm gonna reinforce some of the shadows. So if some of the overspray doesn't look right, I'm gonna fix it. Uh, but like ultimately, like I said, you know, random ass spots of white and black will look pretty good when you get to the final steps. Remember, this is all the pre-highlighting. These are the values that we're gonna be laying down and we're gonna tint it with a hue later. Don't be afraid to Take a chance, essentially. I do want to open up some of these broader areas with some of the wraith bones. So you can see we're going to come in hot, repair it with the black, give ourselves some nice, clean areas. Like I said, it, it don't matter. Like, you got this. Now, open the garage door. It's getting a little hot in my garage. We're going to just lay down some mist. This is where it gets really oppressive in there without a respirator mask. Lay down some misty ass white over some of the big flat regions so it doesn't overpower it. It's going to stay more gray. And this is going to really help create some delineation, some transition between the dark and the light. Now step two, here it is, airbrush that color in. We are going to be using a new product from Creature Caster and Monument. This is the transparent line. This is insanely IRL reasonably priced transparent paints. Not that contrast. This is why I get on that contrast uh, hate bandwagon. Not that they don't work, it's that they don't make sense for the price. These paints are incredibly reasonably priced. I've been working with this company all year and they continue to blow me away. So we just loaded up our airbrush with transparent brown, a little bit of airbrush thinner, and we're just spraying in a, like an atom thin coat of brown over this terrain. Like I'm seriously not fucking around. Like. We spent like 30 minutes on this terrain set today. Like it did not take time. So just light passes of transparent brown. It's not the only color they have in their arsenal though. I mean, you can go as hard as you want, but with just a quick ass rattle can, imagine you could do a whole table of terrain some, with some value painting with the rattle can, a little bit of transparent paint, drop a varnish on it. You good to go, GG, Gucci. Step three, pigment powder. Secret Weapon Miniatures make some of my favorite pigment uh, powders. What I like to do is I like to dilute it with some alcohol. I put it in a spray bottle, shake it up, and I just spray that shit on. Now, this pigment powder and this system, what I'm trying to do is force it into the cracks. I'm just spray it on thick, just mixed up in a you know spray bottle of alcohol, like I said. And we're just going to force it down into the crevices and kind of wick it away from the top areas. We're going to let it build up in unnatural ways, let some speckles land, try to create some delineation. You can see what it's doing, how it's landing and creating some nice effects, really solid color. This is just their dark earth pigment. I'm going to go in hot right here, get it off of the tiles, let it sit inside the cracks. This is a really easy technique. I'm just using a paper towel, guys. You can go hyphy on this. I'm actually, I'm very diluted. So obviously just a couple of pinches of weathering pigment powder to a ton of alcohol. Now, if you, you can go really hard if you want and you can really dirty this table up. The reason I'm using alcohol is it dries super fast. You see those, those steps up there, that the Coliseum area is looking real good with the nice shade of this. And the reason you use this weathering uh, powders, it's realistic. When it dries, it looks real. It looks actually so dry, so natural. And I love it. So let's uh, time lapse it. Let's bang it down. We're just using the paper towel. 
creating some interesting spots, removing it, removing some excess from certain areas. So it's not just so uniform. It's ridiculous. You know, we're going to let it do its thug thizzle, spray some on this collection of crap over here let it do its thing. But we're getting to that critical mass where I'm just going to let the fan blow on it for about five minutes. Let it all dry up so we can really see what we're working with. you got to be careful with the pigments because you might think it looks one way, but when it dries, it looks a totally different way. So here we go. We're going to let it dry. You can see it's going to slowly happen over time. But while it's drying, real quick, guys, new design in the Heretic Swag shop. That night, Legion style. HereticSwag.com, promo code Legions. All right. It's dry. Look at that effect we got. So now what I'm going to do is bring in some green earth. This is a totally different pigment color. I'm going to just spray a little bit of this uh, OG dark earth. Wipe, wipe it up. Add a little of the green dirt to it just to create some new spots. Create a little bit of a mossy effect. And just let it do what it's going to do. Combine them. It's that simple, bro. I'm keeping it gangster. Keep it a hobo in the beats lab. But as you see, it dries. You get a very natural effect. It looks super weathered, super fun, really low stress. You can knock off any of the extra uh, weathering powder if you want with, a, you know, just buy a couple taps in the back, hit it with a hard varnish, lock it all in. It's good to go, baby. Now look, they come with a bunch of clips, these, these tablescapes. So you can clip all this shit together so it's really strong and stable. I just finished clipping this together into a display board. I have a tournament this weekend and I want my fresh ass army, my dirty Mike and the boys looking its best. Shout out to some of the commissioners. Player J for my battalion of Red Corsairs and a shout out to Voodoo Von Acid Bath for hooking me up with all them conversions for those Lord Discordants. Having a blast playing this army. Shout out to Secret Web Miniatures for creating this product. Make it so easy to get your display boards done this weekend. Army Painter and of course Monument Hobbies and Creature Caster. Play on players. If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure, so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.